So you're familiar with Adobe Photoshop, but ever wondered how to enhance your skills and easily transform images? Then this Mastering Adobe Photoshop class is perfect for you. We'll cover everything from advanced retouching techniques, brand mockups, to seamless patterns and neon glow with fun projects and guided by clever shortcuts along the way. As some of you may already know, I'm Kate Silver. I'm a graphic designer, I'm a shoe designer, and a top teacher on Skillshare. Whether you have basic knowledge of Adobe Photoshop, have completed my beginner's class, or are simply looking to learn multiple skills in one go, then this is for you. Now here's a little sneak peek at what you'll learn. We'll start off with advanced retouching techniques because a Photoshop class isn't complete without classic makeover tools, such as removing wrinkles, eye bags, and teeth whitening. Then get ready for one of Adobe Photoshop's best updates, the contextual tab. Simplified tasks like removing backgrounds with one click certainly makes my life easier. While AI may be controversial, I personally love Adobe's take on it. So let's embrace the power of AI with Adobe Photoshop's amazing AI generative fill and expand. Now here's a little thing I like to call fantasy portrait. I've always wanted colorful hair, and now we can easily make that happen with a camera raw filter. Level up your branding and digital marketing game with realistic mock-ups, labels, t-shirts, and learn how to create seamless patterns. We'll even get to play interior designer and turn a dull room into a gorgeously styled one. And last but not least, we'll make our designs pop with creative effects like duotone and my personal favorite, neon glow effect. I'm a big fan of repetition in order to perfect a skill. So we will be repeating every tool a bunch of times throughout the course. As usual, there are tons of files and exercises that you can download with this course. I will be guiding you with clever shortcuts throughout the whole time. And voila, let's get started. Okay, so before we move on to the next part, which will be AI generated Photoshop using AI generated fill and AI generated extension. We're going to talk about something really important called the contextual tab, which I briefly mentioned before. Now, I personally think this is one of the best updates that Adobe Photoshop added, and that's because it just made things a lot easier and a lot quicker to access especially removing backgrounds, editing the background removal, and AI generative fill. So let's have a brief overview of the contextual tab bar. And we're gonna put it to the test with background removal. So this is gonna be really simple. It's not gonna be very beautifully pleasing, but it's more to practice. So I would like us to open background with contextual. And I would like us to open this person that's working, this lovely lady that's working out, open with Adobe Photoshop. And when you open, you will find the contextual tab here. Now, if ever you want to hide the contextual tab or you can't find it and you want to, sh to view it, you can go to window and you will see the contextual task bar right here. If it has a tick, it means it's, you can see it. If I click on it, it will disappear. If I go window, contextual task bar again, I can show it. Anyway, now I have my image and as usual, we can convert this to a smart object if we wanted to. Okay, so the contextual task bar is going to give us a few logical next steps. So we could select the subject, go ahead and click, and it will do a beautiful selection. And let's zoom in so we can see a little bit better. So that's great. 
We also have the possibility of inverting selection. So there's a bunch of stuff we can do here straight away. But let's deselect. What we're going to do straight away is remove background in one click. So we're going to go ahead and remove the background in one click using the contextual tab bar. So we're just going to click. And voila, wow, <laughs> that was so quick. It's incredible. Now, it isn't perfect. I can see her forehead is chopped off. So what's amazing about the contextual tab bar now is that we can subtract from mask or add to mask. So let's click on add to mask. And again, you can adjust your brush size as usual with the right square bracket and left square bracket. And then you can start adding the bits. If there's any bits that are missing, like her fingers, let's zoom in command control plus. And yes, there are some missing <laughs> nails there. So we're just going to add them back and add some more back. So this is really great. The contextual bar thumbs up for me so far. Great. We're going to do a, a few more adjustments in a bit. But to do that first, we're going to add an image as a background because it will be a lot easier to, to view. So let's go to file. Place embedded. And in that folder, you'll see a bunch of images to choose from. Let's select this image nice and green and place. And let's resize it. Click and drag, click and drag and pop it more so we can see the beautiful green window. And once you're done, you can click on done or enter. There we go. Now to now, the, currently, the background is hiding the layer of the woman. So we're going to click and drag and move the layer of the background behind the layer of the woman. Awesome. Now, we're going to make a few adjustments to our mask. So let's go ahead and select the image. If we select the thumbnail of the image, then it will give us a few options. But if we select the layer mask thumbnail instead, the contextual tab will now give us some options for the mask, which is amazing. Let's zoom in command or control plus. Now what's also cool is that we can adjust the feather of the mask. This is something I really like because sometimes it just looks too cut off. So what we can do is click on this and increase the feather effect. And you might notice it very subtly that the edges or the borders of the mask will be softened and feathered which is quite nice because it makes it look a bit more realistic, a bit softer, less cut out. So it's really cool and it's quite a nice quick way of doing that. Great. Perfect. Now, if we wanted, we could also make this image a little bit less saturated because it looks a bit more saturated compared to the background. So we can go to image adjustments hue saturation and just reduce the saturation just a tiny bit and okay and then finally if we wanted we can select the background go to filter blur gaussian blur and add a tiny bit of blur just so that it looks more like depth of field like the woman is in front Apologies for the sound of my cat. And there we go. So that is an introduction to the contextual tab bar. So it's just really easy now to remove a background and to edit the background, the layer mask using the contextual tab. So we'll be using the contextual tab in a bit as well for AI.